Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So before we jump right into this week's video, I just want to say a massive thank you to each and every one of you. The channel recently crossed over 175,000 subscribers, which is just absolutely mind-blowing. And I don't take this for granted at all. I fully understand how busy everyone's schedules are. And for you to take the time out of your day to click on one of my videos when I post it and watch the video and engage with the video by leaving a comment, that truly does mean the world to me. And I, I honestly feel like I'm personally indebted to each and every one of you forever because you literally have made a dream come true for myself and I do not take it for granted at all. So I just wanted to say thank you so very much for that. And much like all milestones on this channel, I do have a giveaway to, uh, to announce at the end of this week's video, so please be sure to stick around for that. Now, as far as the reason you clicked on this video, I finally got a new ball head. And I, I say finally because over the last, I guess, seven or eight years since I've been into landscape photography, I've changed pretty much everything. I've changed different, um, you know, tripods or camera systems or, or this or that. But there's, there's two things that I've never really changed. And uh, there's two things I've never really um, kind of strayed from. And one is the filter system I've been using. I've been using Nissi filters from day one. I absolutely love them. But the other is the ball head that I've been using. And it's not because the ball head I've been using has just been absolutely fantastic. It, it is a good one. It's This is what I've been using for, for many years. It's the Really Right Stuff BH40 ball head. I think this is a very popular ball head, especially for outdoor landscape photographers. This is kind of the smaller version. I think the larger version is called the BH50 or BH55. But for me, over the years, this has been absolutely perfect. And the reason why I really never upgraded, or I should say never changed, is because I honestly just didn't have my finger on the pulse of the, the ball head market for, for many, many years. I just really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it as this pretty much served uh, all my needs and it's, uh, it's been great, it's worked fine. But until recently, I got linked up with uh, my friends over at the Colorado Tripod Company and they sent me over a pre-production model of one of their newer ball heads. I don't think that this is available just yet, but you can pre-order it and it's super, super cool. It's definitely the, the best looking ball head I've ever seen in my life. This is called the Aspen ball head. And well, I was gonna say what's so cool about it. There's a lot of cool things about this tripod. But um, here they are kind of next to each other. And you can tell that the, the Aspen ball head has a slightly larger footprint than the BH40, but the BH40 ball head is quite a bit heavier. This weighs, and I'm going off of memory here, I believe it's right around 17 ounces, maybe a little more than 17 ounces. And the Colorado tripod uh, ball head, or the Aspen ball head, I should say, weighs about 15 ounces and that might not sound like a big difference and i've honestly if you were to just ask me how much i thought these weighed or how big of a, a weight discrepancy was between these two i would have thought it would have been much greater because this ball head feels substantially lighter than the bh40 this feels kind of like a just a solid just like brick or like a giant stone but just the the overall of course the aesthetics of this is it's absolutely beautiful it's um you know i love the, the the black matte finish against the kind of the chrome accents and the fact that this ball here is completely hollowed out on the inside there's nothing in here and then they actually have all the little holes cut out inside of this so the whole entire physical ball head component of the ball head does that even make sense is is very very lightweight and i think that's absolutely fantastic but in my personal opinion, I've had this now for maybe three weeks, two, yeah, three, three or four, yeah, maybe almost a month. The things that I find most beneficial about this, one is, uh, the, of course, the overall aesthetics. Two is the fact that it is definitely lighter than what I've been using. Oh, and a, a huge one. This BH40 ball head is $415. That's what you can get these for now. I actually think I paid $450 for this when, it, when I first purchased it, which in my personal opinion, that's a lot of money for a ball head. And it's great quality though. It's really right stuff. So there's no complaints with it, but it is expensive. This Aspen costs $279. I believe that's right around a 30-ish percent reduction in overall price. So this is substantially less expensive than the BH40 ball head and it's lighter and it's stronger too. So I believe this has an 18 pound payload capacity or payload. 18 pound load capacity and this right here has a 30 pound load capacity not that i'm ever going to strap 30 pounds to this but nevertheless it is much stronger i'm using a slightly larger camera system now with the fuji gfx 100s it's um I sh it's a little bit larger than uh you know a lot of the the you know more popular pro mirrorless cameras out there 
but um, it is definitely a, a little bit heavier too. But uh, not that the BH40 couldn't handle it. But the fact that this is cheaper, it's lighter, and it's substantially stronger, it seems like a win. And plus, I mean, no offense to really right stuff. I think they're fa fantastic. But this Aspen ball head is absolutely beautiful. I think it's it's it definitely looks better than the really right stuff one. But I think that some of the things that are so cool about this is it's got this, and I don't know if this has happened to anybody else, where maybe you have different. Uh, different Arca Swiss plates on different cameras or maybe different types of um, L brackets, but it seems that these types of lever releases fit all of these different plates a little bit differently. I had uh, two different kinds of plates on two different camera systems with this ball head and the really right stuff L bracket that I used to have, of course, fit this absolutely perfect. But the other Arca Swiss plate that I had, it was a little bit tight. It did work, but you kind of had to like really push on it a little bit. But what's cool about this, the Aspen ball head, is it has this kind of knob here, and you can adjust it for different types of um, uh, L plates, Arca Swiss, I mean, whatever the case may be, this can pretty much fit anything because it's adjustable. You just kind of spin this wheel around, and it kind of pushes that clamp out a little bit, or it brings it back in so that when you close it down, it'll fit perfectly. I think that's really cool. And like I said, I haven't had my finger on the pulse of the ball head market. Maybe tons of ball heads have that now, but this is the first one that I've seen, and I think the way they implemented it is pretty nice as well. It's got this really cool locking mechanism here, so when you do close it, you get a really, really satisfying click. That way you know it's locked in place. I found myself just doing this over and over again. I don't know what it is about that, but I think it's great. You get that audible noise, you can actually feel the click as well. So there's really never any kind of doubt as to whether or not your lever mechanism is fully locked. You don't have to worry about your, your camera falling off. So I think that is a nice feature as well. You have your, your tension knob here. You got your pan knob right here, so you can spin it back and forth. That way you can uh, shoot panos if you want to. Now, I think the, the biggest things about this is really the, the range of motion. The range of motion with this is absolutely insane. It's pretty much, you, you can move the, 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 the actual plate or the, the, the I guess the lever, oh, whatever you call this area right here. You can move it in, a, in like a, a thousand different directions where this one was a little bit more limited. So if you, you basically are limited to that right there. So you can't really go beyond that. You can't go beyond that over here. You can't really go backwards much. Your, your range of motion was a little bit limited. If you wanted to drop it all the way down, so if you want to, and I've done this quite a bit in the fall time where you want to, you know, capture a nice little palette of, uh, of autumn leaves on the ground and you want to drop your, uh, your camera face down to take those photos, this just has the little notch right here, which works fine, but you have to move your, your, uh, your composition around or move your ball head around in order to get the, the, um, the stem of the ball head in that area. Not a big deal. But what's cool with this is you don't have that stem, as you can see, and you can literally move this everywhere. You can see how the range of motion with this is substantially greater. You can break, go well beyond 90 degrees all the way down, and you can move it around in all these different directions like this, which I think is absolutely incredible. Is that a shooting position that I shoot in all the time? No, but it is nice when I do want to shoot in that position to be able to do that. That way I don't have to just get it right here in the little stem area right there, and then I'm completely inhibited to, or I should say completely locked into that specific area and I can't go anywhere else. So I think that the range of motion with this is probably one of the biggest selling features and they did, they hit it out of the absolute park. I mean, you can just move this thing everywhere. You can twist it around and I think that's really cool. And for me personally, and I might be missing some of the, the, um, the big, you know, what do you, what do you call my like selling features of this, but the things that meant the most to me is uh, the range of motion, of course, the aesthetics, the lightweight, it doesn't cost a ton of money, but this knob, when I first got it, I looked at, you know, I compare everything. So I compared it to my BH40 and I'm like, wow, this, this is quite a bit larger footprint than the BH40. But then as I started to use this, I love this knob. This knob's got a nice rubber grip on it. And what is so cool is that when you're kind of framing up your shot, you're looking through the, your, uh, your viewfinder and you want to make subtle adjustments to your composition, you can keep your eye through the viewfinder and you can easily grab a hold of this just to loosen it up a little bit, just to make those kind of micro adjustments and then tighten it back down. So at first I felt that this might've been a little bit large, but then after I started to use it, it's really nice just to be able to easily just kind of reach down there. You don't have to look at it and you make your adjustments there just to kind of loosen it up. So I think that's a great feature as well. Overall, it's absolutely fantastic. This is definitely my go-to ball head for now on. I've been using it nonstop ever since I got it and I absolutely love it. And like I said, it looks 
it looks beautiful. So that's kind of the rundown on the Aspen ball head. Like I said, there's a, I kind of went back and forth on whether or not to even make this video because I'm like, you know, how much can you really talk about a ball head? But this was in a thumbnail for a video I put out a few weeks ago and I got a ton of questions about this. So I figured I, it definitely warranted uh, the time to create this video just to share it with you all. And I'll put a link in the description below to this if you want to take a look at it. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. I don't make any money off this one. I just I just really, really like this and I wanted to share it with you all as well. So maybe you, uh, if you're interested, you could pick one up as well. So that is the Aspen ball head and this is the BH40 uh, from Really Right Stuff. Both fantastic ball heads, but um, I kind of like this one a little bit more now. So that's kind of the rundown on that. Now, before I do get into the giveaway, I just want to say a real big thanks again to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use to develop and create and, and maintain my, uh, my entire website. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Now, as far as the giveaway is concerned, uh, the 175,000K giveaway, once again, thank you all so very much for that. And as always, every milestone on this channel, I've always given away a camera bag. I get a lot of camera bags sent to me to, to review and check out. I don't do reviews on all of them, but I ultimately end up kind of uh, accumulating a lot of these. And I don't want them to just sit around. I know that there's other people out there that would be able to, to use them and appreciate them as opposed to them just kind of sitting around uh, my uh, my office is kind of collecting dust. So the giveaway for this video is this. This is the Backlight or Mindshift Backlight 26L. This is an absolutely fantastic bag. It's beautiful. I'm not gonna do a full overview. I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna take a look at it, but tripod attachments, multiple water bottle um, areas. You have uh, you know rear axis in the back. It's only a 26 liter pack and I say only because in today's day and age, let me leave it here. In today's day and age, that's not some of the, the larger bags. I mean, these bags go up to 40, 50, 60, sometimes 80 liters. But I think that around 26 liters to maybe mid 30-ish is really kind of the sweet spot. And I like this because this holds a ton of gear. Well more than 26 liters, it feels like. But you're ultimately not going to get completely bogged down. This is a great setup for someone who's got, you know, multiple camera bodies and maybe two, three, maybe even four lenses. But... Super comfortable pack, looks good, waist belt. Like I said, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to get additional information on that. I think that these retail for just under $300 and it comes with the, the internal kind of camera storage area, all the dividers. There's nothing else you need to purchase for this bag. As soon as you get it, it's, it's good to go. So that is the giveaway. And if you are interested and you do want to enter to, uh, to win the giveaway, just make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and just let me know what kind of bag you're currently using now. And then in two weeks, I'll randomly select a comment from the comment section, and I will make sure that I get this out there to you uh, ASAP. So that is this week's video. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, thank you so, so very much for an amazing past couple of years on this channel. It has been one of the most wild, incredible journeys of my entire life. And I am so thankful for each and every one of you. So um, thank you again. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.